The Boeing 777X versus Boeing 787, its size versus efficiency. The 787 was launched in 2004 and was launched as Boeing believed the future of long haul was really in the point to point model, with smaller aircraft going further distances straight to their final destinations, avoiding hub airports altogether. Thus, the 787 was launched as a smaller aircraft than the 777 making it easier to fail, but with brand new technologies that meant it was more efficient and had more range. The new technologies made it around 20% more efficient, and it quickly became a hit with the world's major airlines. Pushed by customer demand, Airbus eventually responded with their brand new A350XWB, a similar brand new carbon composite airliner. However, the A350 was designed to be larger than the 787 and competed with both. The larger A350-900 and Dash 1000 were almost the same size or the same size as the Boeing 777 models. Airbus wanted to take on the 787 and 777 with one aircraft family, with the same new technologies that made 787 so efficient, but slightly bigger with more performance on par with the 777. The largest A350 the Dash 1000 could compete with the 777-300ER but flies further and burned 25% less fuel. Clearly, it became clear to Boeing that unless they did something, they're gonna lose the 777-300ER market they held on to for so long. Working with 777 customers aka airlines, Boeing decided to build upon the 777's legacy and launched the 777X in the 2013 Dubai Air Show. It was the largest twin jet ever, and to compete with the A350-1000 in seat cost due to the higher trip cost of the heavier 777 airframe, Boeing stretched the Dash 300ER by 2.87 meters and added around 40 additional seats to lower seat cost. In turn, the 777X was larger than 787 and 8350. So between the size of the 777X and efficiency of the smaller brand new 787, which is better, how big's the gap, and which is more relevant in today's market. Before I find out, if you're new here, a warm welcome and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great videos on the way. Number one, performance. The longest range 787, the Dash 9, flies 7,635 nautical miles while carrying 296 passengers in a two-class layout. The longest range 777X, the smaller Dash 8, carries around 384 passengers two-class to 8,730 nautical miles. The largest 787, the 10, carries 342 passengers two-class and flies 6,345 nautical miles. The largest 777X, the Dash 9, carries a whopping 426 passengers two-class and flies them to 7,285 nautical miles. So all in all, the 777X models flies around 800 to 1,000 nautical miles further and carries around 80 more passengers on average. Engines. The 787 has two choices, GE NX-1B or Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 TEN. The next generation engines were launched in 2003 with a higher bypass ratio of 10 to 1 and a larger fan of 112 inches. Each produces up to 71,000 pounds of thrust for the Dash 9 and 76,000 pounds for the Dash 10. While these are new generation engines, they are not as new as the new GE 9X engines featured on the triple. 7X. 777X has only one exclusive engine. The latest generation newest technology GE 9X is the world's largest jet engine with a fan diameter of 134 inches and has a 9.9 to 1 bypass ratio. The engines contribute to around 10% lower fuel burn. Thrust is at 110,000 pounds each when installed on the 777X. Efficiency. The 787 being smaller, lighter, obviously has a much lower cost per trip, at around 7% less. We'll compare the Dash 9 models from both families as it's a more fair comparison. The 787-9 burns 7% less fuel than the 777-9 at around 7.18 kg per kilometer per trip over around a 7,000 nautical mile mission for both. The 777-9 over that same trip would burn 7.69 kg per kilometer. However, 
thanks to the added seats. The 777X does have a much lower fill burn per seat of around, I would say, 10%. Cabins. The 787 was the first to feature Boeing's brand new sky interior. With curved overhead bins, new mood lighting, it gives it a more spacious feel. It also has larger windows which are dimmable at the touch of a button. The carbon composite fuselage also allows for better air with lower cabin altitude at 6,000 feet plus the 787 has a quieter cabin. Optional is the latest IFEM Wi-Fi. However, as 9 abreast was later crammed into the 787 family, this means a narrow economy seat at around 17 inches. The 777X built upon the 787 Sky Interior with the next generation of the Sky Interior. It has cathedral-like ceilings with projection mood lighting. The 777X also has the same larger windows, still slightly smaller than the 787, and the electronic dimming feature is an option for the 777X. 777X has the same aluminum fuselage as 777s, but now has a lower cabin altitude of 6,000 feet plus more moist air, which is quite amazing for an aluminum fuselage. Also new are the new cabin sidewalls with better, thinner insulating materials. This allows an additional 4 inches of cabin width, taking the cabin width up for the 777X to 235 inches, the widest twin engine cabin ever. This means 17.2 inch seats in a 10 abreast layout. Boeing markets 18 inch wide seat bases, but the seats all around are around 17.2 inches wide. All in all, the 777X with a more spacious cabin is a more comfortable flying experience. Advantages and disadvantages The 777X is obviously bigger, carries more passengers, more cargo, and has more outright range. It's the VLA of the future in my opinion with its high capacity, but still offers sufficient levels of efficiency. It shares some commonality with the over 1,000 777s in service, and shares a common type rating with the 787 and same type rating with 777, lowering pilot transitioning costs and time. However, Demand for such large 400-seater aircraft is at an all-time low. Boeing had to make the 777 larger to lower the seat mount cost and make 777X more competitive against the new clean sheet A350-1000. Airlines did not in fact ask for more seats, and the market for such an aircraft is really small. The 787 in my view is the right size and has the right range for today's market. With its lower trip cost, fewer seats, it's easier to make a profit. It's also more versatile and can be deployed across more routes on the airline's route network. However, for really popular slot congested routes or for routes with high cargo demand, it obviously cannot carry the amount that the 777X can carry. Its carbon fiber fuselage also means potentially higher maintenance costs in the long run. If there's an indication on the size of aircraft airlines want, it's in the orders they place in it. The 777X across both the Dash 8 and Dash 9 has sold 309 units. The larger 787s, the Dash 9 and 10 we're comparing today, has sold 1,083. So what's the overall verdict? Well, the 777X is the VLA of the future and is an efficient replacement for the VLAs today. It builds upon the 787's technology and upsizes it with high performance. There is also a big difference clearly between the 787 and 777X even though both share the same new technologies. However, today's market needs are not a larger, more capable white body, but a white body that's more versatile and can be deployed across more routes with low trip cost. The smaller 787 with the lower trip cost fewer seats, it's easier to fill and easier to make a profit. All in all, I reckon the 787 is the backbone of future long-haul flying and is the more relevant aircraft today. Thanks for tuning in and to meet next time, one team, one aviation, one sky ahead.